human will have a responses to uh, the lighting conditions, intensity, and color. So that will affect the human's um, uh, visual comfort, um, working productivity, efficiency, and even health. Welcome to Growing Impact, a podcast by the Institutes of Energy and the Environment at Penn State. Growing Impact explores cutting-edge projects of researchers and scientists who are solving some of the world's most challenging energy and environmental issues. Each project has been funded through an innovative seed grant program that's facilitated through IEE. I'm your host, Kevin Sliman. Today on Growing Impact, I speak with Julian Wang, an Associate Professor of Architectural Engineering, and Anne-Marie Chang, an Associate Professor of Biobehavioral Health, about their project titled Building Energy Savings by Tuning Indoor Lighting. Their project explores how lighting can be adjusted in order to help reduce energy usage and positively impact human health. Welcome to the Growing Impact Podcast, Julian Wang and Anne-Marie Chang. Thanks for having me. This is Julian. Yes, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks. Let's start talking about your project. Why is it important then to be thinking about indoor lighting? Yeah, I can start with this question. Um, so the indoor lighting uh, has, uh, I mean, from the research perspective and also the, the daily living perspective, uh, it has uh, two major uh, impacts. The one is about the building, is about building energy. So based on the energy information uh, administration data, uh, about 20% energy use um, of building uh, is contributed by lighting, indoor lighting, so electrical lighting, electrical luminaires. Uh, so residential building may be a little bit lower than 20%, and a commercial building might be a little bit higher than that. But this average is around 20%. And it's not only about the, the lighting from energy perspective, even from traditional perspective, lighting or luminaires will also bring some, some heat gains. So heat gains to indoor environment that that will further changing, uh, further change the the HVAC, the air conditioning uh, energy consumption. Uh, and the second second aspect about the lighting impact, I think, is about human. So indoor occupants, human will have a responses to uh, the lighting conditions, intensity, and color. So that will affect the humans' um, uh, visual comfort, um, working productivity, efficiency, and even health. So Annie Marie has uh, some uh, previous studies on that. So Annie Marie, maybe you want to uh, introduce more about that? Sure, sure. Um, so my research has uh, looked at aspects of light and uh, indoor light and um, how those uh, environmental cues affect things like uh, human circadian rhythms um, and uh, also how people perceive their moods, um, how people perceive their alertness um, or sleepiness um, Mm -hmm. and really daily activities um, and how those are affected in their responses to the lighting environment. I read in the title talking about tuning indoor lighting. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you talk a little bit about tuning it and what that means? Yeah. So, um, you know, the the traditional lighting systems, they are kind of just switch on, switch off. But now um, the solid, we call solid state lighting uh, technology, LED, LED is a part of that. So this kind of technology has evolved in terms of better uh, luminar architecture and also more advanced control technologies. So now the indoor lighting can be tuned to deliver uh, much much more flexible and uh, robust options. So Mm -hmm. what is your project examining? Yeah, in this work, we particularly look at the thermal response. So we didn't mention, we mentioned energy and human response uh, and regular uh, uh, heat gains from luminaries to to the thermal environment. But actually in this work, we we look at the human thermal response to tuning, to the tuning of indoor lighting. So in simple words, uh, the red light is perceived a little bit, a little bit hotter and the blue light is perceived in the opposite way. In in our project, we would like like to 
directly work with the human subjects within a thermal chamber and more accurate um, lighting spectral and intensity controls. So more importantly, we want to examine uh, the inner spectral, or we can call it a color, inner color and intensity compositions rather than lighting appearance. In our hypothesis, uh, we, we think the, the major uh, the major stimulator, or we can call uh, actuators of thermal response are not lighting appearance, but rather uh, inside or inner radiometric content, like the color and intensity, the inner side of each color. We can compose different things to have very similar appearance of lighting. So we are looking at the inner part rather than appearance. We would like to control the lighting appearance to be within um, kind of appropriate range, but with very different inner spectral or color compositions. So now the million dollar question is, why? <laughs> why do you want to look at this and what, what do you suppose can, what can be uh, you know, affected by these changes? Right, right. So, um, yeah, in order, we know in order to maintain uh, user indoor satisfaction the, or indoor comfort, the, the temperature set points for heating and cooling systems must be adjust, uh, adjusted to meet thermal comfort needs. Um, so like our thermostat on the wall, right? So we need to change that to meet our thermal comfort needs. So if the, the concept we just mentioned, or the hypothesis we mentioned, within appropriate range of lighting appearance, if the lighting, the inner spectral composition can change human thermal response. So some lighting condition can make people feel a little bit cooler. Some of them make people feel a little bit warmer. Then we can basically widen the, 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 the temperature settings. Right, so the, the, the evidence, um, we, we did some preliminary energy analysis. Um, if we widen the temperature set points, how much energy we can, we can reduce. So uh, our preliminary analysis demonstrated this, widening the, cooling, uh, widening the cooling and heating thermostat set points by just uh, one Celsius degree could save air conditioning uh, energy use seven to 15%. Uh, if more than that, if it's a three or four Celsius degree expansion, could reach more than 30 or 40%. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's significant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From just changing, well, ju um, I'll use the word just, but from changing the way that the lighting is, uh, that we're, our brains or our eyes or et cetera, are perceiving light. That's right. amazing. And that's really based on a perception too, that uh, an individual might not even notice. Mm -hmm. Right. So they would notice they wouldn't notice the change in the lighting um, when you tune it to, you know, just a slight difference in uh, the inner spectral composition. Um, and they might not actually, uh, you know, realize um, that they are they have an altered response, thermal response mm -hmm. to that lighting. Um, so they they may, you know, perceive it as they're just going about their daily, you know, um, within their comfort range mm -hmm. thermally. Um, they're just going about their daily lives or their work, um, it, you know, it, the way they usually do without even noticing this change um, that right. could have a huge impact for energy uh, savings. Oh, yeah. Let's, so let's talk about scalability. Are you looking at residential? Are you looking at larger buildings or a little bit of both? And then how scalable is it? Right. So this is also, this is a very good question. Um, so from technology perspective, I, I don't think it's, uh, uh, I don't think it's uh, complicated once we confirm the concept, but there, we do have some uh, questions like different person may have different feelings to those things. And we are not serving uh, this kind of technology for individual. We work for the group of people in the building. Right. So that may bring some questions. We also need to address those uh, 
I mean, before the scale, before scale up to the real application. Yeah, and also back to the second part of your question for the commercial and the residential. Um, I think the from the energy saving perspective, um, commercial building might be uh, a target for us because the I mean the based on the lighting energy consumption uh, fraction, that one is a little bit higher than the residential buildings. And that we, we probably can save more energy uh, if we use that in the commercial building rather than residential. But this has really, um, it could have very significant implications for human health um, and considering things like thermal comfort for sleep. Um, you know, that application could also be extended, I think, uh, and there are, you know, really great potential opportunities for uh, looking at, um, you know, residential use, um, even though you might see a smaller scale uh, in terms of the energy efficiency um, compared to a commercial building. Um, this could have, you know, real impact in the consumer, um, you know, perspective of people in their homes wanting thermal comfort. Right, right. I agree. So, for yeah, I agree. So, the, this kind of technology, once we prove them that the concept, it can be integrated into uh, the other lighting technologies for human health. Um, uh, related things like for nursing home, they are already using some bright light um, to to deliver the bright light for residents to to give them more exposure to uh, daylight, uh, the, the simulating daylight. So something like that, probably we can incorporate this kind of thing into there to not only about thermal response, also related to the the general human uh, health and also well being. So can we talk about the interdisciplinary aspect of this? Why does it project like this benefit from an interdisciplinary team and looking at it from different directions and maybe talk about some of those different areas where you need expertise? I feel like the, uh, the opportunity to learn is so, uh, so great in this type of um, seed grant, um, you know, call because uh the expertise that each of us bring to the project um, really not only fills in um, the gaps that exist in our own um, specific fields, but I think the most exciting science um, happens when you have overlap of um, different fields and different disciplines. And um, at those edges of overlap is where you really push um, fields forward. And so um, Julian uh, comes with a perspective and an understanding and an expertise um, of lighting and um, engineering that um, is so novel to me, um, but yet I understand um, aspects of it with regards to lighting. And so uh, it, it, I think, really uh, adds a robustness and a rigor to this research um, that incorporates these different perspectives. I just want to add two um, more um, feelings I have in this procedure. Um, one is about interpretation, uh, really interpretation of scientific questions. You know, the interpreting uh, the research results, the findings uh, is is crucial for, for both uh, outside public awareness and also the inside research domains. With the help from, uh, um, from experts in other areas, this can be achieved much smoothly and, uh, and clearly to interpret the results, mm -hmm. um, give more sense to the content. Uh, and more and more, I mean, yeah, interpretable um, uh, explanations. And another feeling I have is, uh, is kind of efficient uh, problem solving procedure. Uh, I was having the, some questions when I when I work in, in my part, when I try to uh, try to uh, design experiments or 
the, uh, or um, um, working on the protocols uh, for human studies or uh, working on instruments, uh, uh, some other things. So we can easily get a solutions and, and effective comments from Annie Murray or from other faculty members, other investigators in other areas. Yeah, we do have kinesiology, um, uh, biobehaviors, Annie Murray, and also the electrical engineering and architecture engineering. So um, we, we, we can have, uh, I think this kind of interdisciplinary uh, corp, um, incorporation can give us um, very effective and efficient um, problem solving procedure. It's, it's much easier. What do you hope this project can achieve? At this stage, we just want to prove the concept with a small sample of size. So once we have those results, we will have a kind of in-depth discussion based on the results obtained from this seed funding project and to see how we can develop or generate a new hypothesis or more comprehensive hypothesis or accurate hypothesis um, to, to design those things for next step. Uh, once we have that, we want to have, uh, we want to uh, pursue external opportunities to work on a more comprehensive view of this project, involve, involve more uh, participants in the experiments uh, and even put them into the real test the bed uh, to, to see the human response and energy saving at the same time. For me, the, that would be the most exciting part <laughs> is to, um, you know, to, to look at the results, preliminary results, and really generate hypotheses going forward. Um, because I think that's an exciting, um, you know, it, it really opens up uh, a lot of opportunities um, and potential, you know, paths to follow. I appreciate you both taking time to speak with me today about your project. All right, thank you. It thank was you a pleasure. You've been listening to Growing Impact, a podcast by the Institutes of Energy and the Environment at Penn State. I've been your host, Kevin Sliman. This has been season two, episode two. Thank you for listening.